Hey guys, my name is Anthony. I'm a commercial DP slash videographer here in Orlando, and we're doing a BTS of this worship production that we have going on. I wasn't able to find one on YouTube, so I figured I would just make one of my own. But even if this kind of thing isn't your thing, I would stick around to the end because there's gonna be some useful, just behind the scenes, maybe things going wrong, hopefully not, but behind the scenes look onto how these productions really happen, whether it's haze, we're gonna talk to the gaffer, other different people on the production. So super excited, come join us. So right here I have my buddy AJ. He's actually gonna be doing BTS photo as well as taking photo of the event. He'll be hands on set, but he also has a YouTube channel, so check him out. Is there anything you wanna say? Uh, appreciate you having me out. And Absolutely. excited for you guys to see how this looks. Yeah, it's gonna be dope. So follow me here to this guy with the tennis balls. So this is Dan the man. He, yeah, <laughs> he's an incredible gaffer, and he's really gonna be making this production just look a lot better than what I would have done if I was the gaffer, so super stoked to have you on, bro. Let's do it, let's get to work. So what are we working with here? So this is an A320 Avenger high hi hive uh, So basically we're setting it up so that we can boom a light and use this natural ambience that we already have. Um, to create this a soft glow on the middle area. That's kind of what we're going for to start, and then we'll build from there. We did. We actually did this production pretty last minute, but I'm super excited to shine some lights through the windows, because with the haze, it's gonna create some nice, thick beams of light that'll look hopefully good. So we could probably get like a towel or something just to like dampen the... Just a little bit. Yeah, we'll put it we'll put it underneath it and over it. So this lets us do intervals mm -hmm. where we could have output every certain amount. Is that the max? What? Is that the max of pumping? Oh no, bro. No, no, that thing will <laughs> This will fill the only oh. thing is if this is pumping during like a quiet moment. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. <laughs> if watch it be like the same exact frequency. Or, or a harmony of it. Yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> it like works out perfect. It's like, yo, what did you how'd you get that drone noise like on here? <laughs> How, how'd you get that drone noise on your on your Nord, bro? I always feel weird at this point because we really can't do anything with cameras or anything. I'm just telling people what to do. You want me to clean it up? Yeah, clean it like closer to the thing. So, so you're just gonna hand me this. I'm gonna just show you the camera setups that we're working with today. So for one of the cameras, I have my buddy Ray. He's over there if you want to just. He's gonna be using the C70 with a 24 to 70. I actually don't have a speed booster on it normally, which is what I would use, but my 70 to 200, I found out was broken yesterday morning. So we need the reach. So we're using the Super 35 sensor as an advantage over full frame. But I'm gonna be running the Lumix S52 on this tiny little RS3 Mini. For a production like this, that might seem like it's something super small and like not as professional, but I'm gonna be running around all night, so it's a lot easier and it'll get basically the same results as a bigger gimbal. So I'm super excited about it. All of our cameras do have a 1/8 uh, black Pro Mist on. These are from Nissi. But yeah, so I, I specifically chose like 1 8 over 1 4th because we're already hazing the room. There's already going to be light distribution and softness in the room regardless. So I didn't want to make it too soft, especially when we're going to be shining lights through the windows. I didn't want it to be too bloomy and it would have had a weird effect. So we chose 1 8 for both cameras. So quick shout out to Hollyland for sending out these Solidcom C1 Pros. They ended up sponsoring part of this production. Super grateful to them. If we didn't have these, honestly, we would have been yelling across the room and for a worship production that is just not okay that's that's not for any production that's not okay but specifically for this is going to be quiet moments so we can't do that so right now we're just waiting for the lights to go up we can't really judge our exposure see the room all these different things without that we didn't have a pre-production day unfortunately so we're doing it all on the day of production i don't even know why we're doing a youtube video on top of it but I felt like this would be useful and necessary for people on the channel. So, for you guys.
we don't have a powerful enough stand to push the 600D as tall as we wanted. So we're gonna have to try and like fake it and use the yellow windows to our advantage just to gel the light so it looks like sunlight. But we'll see how it looks. We're just, we're fluid. We're, we're, trying, to, we're trying to make it work. We just wanna create some texture in the wall instead of having a, a blank window shape. So we're just gonna make the texture by adding gaff tape. I don't know if it's gonna work like this, but. This is sick, bro, what? Uh, that's okay, bro, that's all right. All right, so we're back in the office the day after production. My back is sore, my legs are sore. It was just a wild experience. We really didn't film much after what you just saw, and that's because it got crazy. Those last couple clips were actually 15 minutes before the actual event started, so we really crammed a lot into the amount of time that we were given. There were some things I wish we would have done differently, and there were some things I just didn't touch on in the video because I didn't have time or I didn't really think about it while I was on set doing five different roles, but that's what this section's for. So there's a saying, shoot for the moon and you'll land amongst the stars or something like that. And while I think that's a kind of decent way to look at things, for this production, I think for most productions in general, you should have a realistic approach on how you plan out the lighting and all of these things. We had time constraints, we had budget constraints, and we wanted to create a look that was well above our budget and time. While I still think our final product looked really good, I would have completely scrapped beaming the lights from the outside because we didn't have a pre-production day to set it all up. And I would have just taken the 600D and blasted it into the ceiling so that we would have had a really good strong key to balance exposure and have everything look more moody and darker in the background. We used two 200Xs with lantern soft boxes to key our subjects, which was in the middle on the rug. And that just simply wasn't enough to create the look that we were going for. It was a little bit more high key than what we had envisioned. And the only way we had proper exposure, which is crazy to think, is the last 10 minutes, we threw four Pavo tubes on the floor and aimed them at our talent so that it would be properly exposed and look correct. Literally, while we were starting the event, my buddy was the only person shooting and it's a live audio recording so he can't miss a shot. I was adjusting exposure, adjusting color temperature just to make it right and just did what I could to hop on camera as soon as possible and help my buddy Ray out. So that's definitely something I would have done differently. I just would have shot it easier and not try to be fancy. Although I think it looked really good, I would have done it easier and perfected what I could have done and what my budget allowed instead of trying to push it even more. But the final results were pretty good in my opinion. I just wanted to share that with you guys if maybe you're doing your first production like this or you're thinking about getting into this space or live audio recordings. Something I wasn't able to touch on in the video is that we were doing a live album recording video. So that means the audio that was recorded that day we needed to have footage for every second that actually aligned with the video. What that means is I couldn't just do what I normally do, which is record for five seconds and get a bunch of 20 second clips that I could mash together for a music video. I had to always be recording and I had to always have a shot and coordinate with my second person and make sure they had a shot when I was switching to a different shot. This is really hard to explain, so we actually recorded our communication through the comms. So you hear how intricate and difficult shooting like this was. Uh, I'm going to her after. You You're good. One? You're good. I got one. I'm switching. Cracking. Yeah. Let me know when you're good. Got it. Got it. Changing. Would have been much easier having a switcher and a dedicated director 
that was telling who was on at one point and saying which shots to get. We didn't have that option, but we made do with what we had. Definitely one of the most interesting experiences I've had shooting on set. I'm not gonna cover everything that had to do with this production, but if you do have specific questions, ask them down in the comment section below and I'll make sure to get to them as soon as I can. If you like this video, make sure you actually hit that like button because it really helps the algorithm. Consider subscribing for future content and sharing this video out with your friends if it's helped you. And I'll see you in the next one.